What's going on, Combat Sports Nation? This is Sean here with another Beyond the Mat episode. We are very excited to be able to bring you another episode. We're going to get these things cataloged and uh, the episodes numbered. Unfortunately, we can't do them every week as time permitting right now, but we are very excited to at least bring you the content that we're able to bring you. Now, whether it's the debuting amateur or the world champion, we're going to make sure that we invest the time in creating and invest the time in sitting down and interviewing whoever it might be. We're going to bring you some powerful stuff, very least some candid stuff. So we try to keep it smooth. We try to keep it simple, uh, but sometimes things go off script. Recently, we were able to go ahead and attend a local event here in New England, a Warrior Nation. The reason why I mention this is it was very much a big deal as Kevin Ferguson Jr., uh, Baby Slice, Kimbo Slice's son, was making his 175-pound debut, amateur debut, uh, in, inside an MMA cage. And it was impressive. Very, very impressive. Now, um, you, you probably haven't seen video. You may have seen pictures. Uh, hopefully, the video out will be out sometime uh, or another, hopefully sooner than later. But... Um, we were able to go ahead and, and talk to him a little bit after his bout. We know MMA fighting was able to discuss, you know, talk to him um, in person. Um, I believe Sports Illustrated was there. Now, I, I was a little unprepared when I sat with him and his manager, um, so, so or his coach. So what I was willing to do, or what I had asked if I could do, is come see him at, at the gym that he now trains out of. In, in West Hartford, Team Plus One Defense Systems. Now, I, I want to point out the these interviews are going to be very limited uh, with with uh, Junior with um, Baby Slice because a lot of the, a lot of what's going on is people just want to discuss him or excuse me, just discuss his father, and that wasn't our focus. Um, that wasn't our game plan. Our game plan is to learn more about him. As the, as the person, as the fighter, as somebody who had uh, a first round face plant KO of his opponent, so who who just happens to be Kimbo Slice's son, uh, we were we were blessed to be able to go ahead and and interview them because in the Northeast we have built an amazing relationship with many many schools, Team Plus One being one of them. Um, we had visited them, you know, previous to, uh, asking for this interview. So there was already that relationship built. They had already known that, that we do the right thing and, and had trusted us with, with sitting with Kevin. So without further ado, continue to follow along with us, uh, especially on our YouTube page, our description and our video for our YouTube page, our intro video will already, will be up soon. There isn't one. Um, it was suggested that we make one and we're going to do that. We're going to do that. So you want to subscribe to our YouTube page, especially since I was able to get some training video of, um, of baby slice, very impressive, very powerful. Uh, but first let's start with this interview. I appreciate everybody listening. Uh, have fun. It was a lot of fun with us. What's going on combat sports station. This is Sean here. At Team Plus One Defense Systems with Tim Flores. What's going on? And uh, so I say it right. It's Kevin Ferguson Jr. Baby Slice, or do you put the Baby Slice in the front of it? Is it Kevin Baby? Slice? How do you how do you do that? It's however they want to put it. You know, as long as they know Baby Slice. That's right. That's right. Now, um, so we were here today. We we first met at uh, Warrior Nation. Yep. Um, came by today. I guess we could start at Warrior Nation. Right. Impressive. Thank you. Thank you, you know, um, you know the the first round knockout. I think it was probably halfway through the round. But you had him back on his heels the entire time. Yep. Um, what was the experience when you first walked into the cage? You know, I, I felt good. You know, I wanted to stay calm, stay focused. You know, watching my opponent, kept my eyes on him the minute I walked in the cage. Saw that. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you know, I just I didn't want to go to the ground. I wanted to see how he reacted to my power. Once I realized he couldn't take it, I just turned it up. It, and he couldn't take it. Right. You know, um, let me ask you about that power. You sparred with him a little bit today, or, or you know, even held pads for him. What's up with that power? Oh, uh, it's deadly. It's, uh, <laughs> when he hits you, you know at that point for a fact. And the leg kicks. I heard the leg kicks were oh, yeah. solid there. Yeah, he mixes it up pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I didn't get to do that in a fight. You know, it was 
I, I, I didn't get comfortable yet. Just mm -hmm. put it like that. It was more of like, okay, let's just see if he could take my power standing up yeah. the hands. And if he couldn't, then I was going to turn it on. But if it would have got later into the round or fight, you would have saw me come up with way more things. Than now, just was the there a certain point in the fight where you knew like, I have this, it's in the bag? Well, I, yeah, well, once I hit him, once I actually connected for the first time and I saw his reaction, <laughs> I, I realized, okay, it might be over now. But I wanted to still keep my eyes on him just in case he threw something I didn't want to get hit. Yeah, the whole reception act. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. Like, I'm not going to lie, my smoker, my first smoker, if you watch it, you will see I was, I was not there because um, I wasn't used to the 16 ounce gloves. Or the headgear. I never wear headgear in sparring. Right. I don't like it at you all. You got almost headgear. Right, right so now. exactly. I don't need that. That's just overweight. Too much weight on me. But I felt good, man. I felt really good, you know, watching my opponent. I just wanted to keep my eyes on the opponent. I didn't too much focus on the crowd. Mm -hmm. It's a different feeling when you're in there. It's not like sparring, you know, it's completely oh, yeah. different, you know. It's totally different. Yeah. You gotta know you gotta know how to channel that energy. And not let it were you able to focus overwhelm on your coaches you. and everything. I heard my coaches definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm familiar with Les's voice. So when he's yelling, I mean, I can hear him from a mile away when he's yelling at me. He's like, more combinations, more combinations. So I was throwing three, three combinations at a time. I was throwing three punches at a time. You know. But so, yeah. So well, are you looking at a new date to fight, or is that? Not in the mix yet. Um, I want to keep training. I feel like I haven't, I didn't do anything, you know. I feel yeah. like I haven't accomplished nothing yet. I'm still starting, so I just want to keep training, tra train more, train more, uh, cut more weight, get down weight, you know. Just want to train more. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Did you ever feel like you had like an intimidation factor working with you when you stepped in the cage? I'm not sure. I got. I have to watch the fight. I. I wasn't I thinking. Yeah. You know. I wasn't thinking about that when I was in. I was just more of like. Because right, I'm sure he was a know. little intimidated about yeah. the whole process, but he got in there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, much respect to Tom, Tim. What is his name? Tom Brink. Tom I mean, Brink. Brink. I'm yeah, pretty sure that was him. Him, man. Um, yeah. So you win. You know. Right. Uh, it is what's going through your mind uh, as as your hand is being raised? Is, it, is there a relief or? I mean, definitely a big relief because I put a lot of work into this, you know, especially the last year with the injuries. And, you know, I feel like I know I love the sport because I had those thoughts where I was like, man, I want to quit or, you know, this might not be for me. But then I came back to the gym the next day, you know, or I got injured. I was out for six months, but then I still came back into the gym and got back into it. So that's when I knew I loved it and I had a passion for it. I will tell you, and for the people who are not in there, I was at the meeting table. I was right there. And that was... That was the epitome of what a face plant knockout was. I mean, I was right there, and it it was brutal. Right. It was pretty bad. Yeah. I mean, what's that feeling when you're looking over and you're like, all right. See, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I, I don't know if you guys ever saw the movie, like, The One or Unleashed, yes. when Jet Li on the chain, you yes. know? When they take the chain off him, he turns into, like, a completely <laughs> different person. And then when they put it back on him, he's calm. So it's like... Yeah. After the fight, I was like, oh, what the hell? What did I just do to this guy? <laughs> I was looking at him. If you see some of the pictures, I was looking down. And I was like, oh, man, did I just do that? You know, it just, everything, everything just settled down. And I was just like, whoa, like, wow, I do have power. Because I never knew before. I always thought I had power, but I didn't really know. Mm -hmm. You know, so for me to do that, it was just like, it, I was amazed myself, just like everyone else was. Did you ever have to go to 100%? Ne uh, I never like went that. 100% before, never, because I can't go in here because I already, you know, I hurt a couple of guys, I didn't mean to hurt them, okay. but, you know, I did by accident, so, and I felt really bad about that, so, that just, I had to, I, that's, that's how, I, I guess, I learned how to control it, control the power, but when I went in there, it was, everything was just, you know, full power, <laughs> it's speed, everything. yeah, everything, right, no, right, even great. the body shots, you know, it was great punches, <laughs> yeah. you know. It was great, and you were mixing it up, you were mixing it up, wow, yeah, right. well, who, who are you attributing your stand-up to here? Like, who, who's running your hands with you, or? Uh, I, I guess, well, I haven't really worked that, honestly, here. I, it was more, like, technique, you know? Mm -hmm. As far as one-on-one -on -one with a coach, I haven't really, you know, I didn't really, I haven't really did one-on-one -on -one yet. And that's what I was telling, you know, him right here. Yeah. Now, Tim. Um, Tim, that's what I was telling Tim. To talk about your grappling and right. talk about key and stuff, and, and um, yeah. how does it feel being in those compromised situations with... You know, whether it's a smaller guy or a bigger yeah. guy, and you're tied you're up. You're all tied up. And, and, and the yeah. heat, yeah. You're, you're not even in a, a choke or a submission. It's the <laughs> right. heat of the I'm heat. I'm used to it now. At first, it, I did not like Horrible. it, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought I was going to pass out sometimes. And they then one guy, fuck, yeah, sorry for the cousin, but one guy... Uh, Grab, yeah, you know, and, uh, and I was like, what is he doing? And then, you know, he turned around in his head, and I'm getting choked out. But I didn't tap, though. I just flipped out of it, and I was like, all right, I get it. But now I'm, I'm pretty good, man. 
They're going to be surprised. Put it like that. A lot of people are going to be surprised when they see that grappling and then they see everything. And there's a gi class going on downstairs. Right. We're, we're up here. Yeah. Um, so you're not doing much gi here? Is that no, right? No, I do a lot, a lot of gi. Lot oh, of gi. you do do yes. a lot of gi. I said the first two months I didn't like the gi. Oh. And I didn't want to do it, you know, because it wasn't, I was just new to it, so I didn't understand it. But I eventually, you know, Sensei Darren talked me down and he was like, you know, get the gi. It's like, you're going to need it to take it to the next level. And I was a, just a wrestler, you know, using full strength. Yeah, you know? all the time. Yeah, right. You know, <laughs> then I learned how to you know, do more technique and use the strength when I have to. Explosive when you right, need to be. Yeah. So I, as we're talking about it, I believe what it was that you said is you're not doing any um, uh, outside of fighting competition, right? No, no, no grappling no tournaments. No, tournaments. No, so you're no, purely, no. your main focus is, is training, is training, conditioning, yep. getting better. Yep. And I know I talked to your you know, to your coach Les, and mm -hmm. that's what he said is, is you focus on nothing more than training, he right. takes care of the rest. Yeah. Um, who's your favorite fighter? Favorite fighter, hmm. That's a tough one. I, Floyd Mayweather, if it's talking boxing. Oh, yeah, just all, all, all Floyd, over. Floyd Mayweather, Mike Tyson, Muhammad Ali, top three. All right. And MMA, I'll have to go with Anderson Silver. Okay. TJ Dillashaw, his movement is incredible. And, um, yeah, I guess that's about it for me, man. That's a good. That's a good segue into there because you said uh, Anderson Silva. That's one eighty-five. Right. You said Dillashaw one thirty-five. Right. You fight one seventy-five. Well, actually, when, if, when I turn pro, I want to be fighting one fifty-five. That's what I was going to ask right. you. Is ultimately um, when you do make that transition. Yeah, one fifty-five definitely. That's where you want to be. Yeah. Um, how how tall are you now? What's your frame now? I'm like five. I'm not sure. Honestly, they tell me so many different <laughs> things. I'm between like five nine, five eleven. I'm I was five, unsure yeah. now. After you told me it was yeah. your brother, I'm like, oh, I don't yeah. know, man. Um, you said 5'9", 5'11". 5'11", yeah. That's great, yeah. that's great. What do you walk around at? I'm like 185, 183. I know after, I, well, I wanna, I'm want to. i going to start working on the weight, but after this W, I just ate a lot of, I just, you know, <laughs> eat a little bit. So I'm probably like 190 right now <laughs> until I start cutting weight again. But, yeah, I'm definitely going to be walking around. Like, I want to walk around 170 and fight at 155. Yeah. Now, uh, talk about that, that passion. Um, you're, you're an athlete through and through. Right. And when we first spoke, you, were, you had talked about wrestling. Mm -hmm. And I looked, you know, I wanted to get a little bit more familiar with you right. before we sat down um, and come to find out that you, your last name, or, or you're a junior, right. and then you have a brother with the same last name, same except for he's the second. He's the second. Um, is there another brother there? Uh, well, yeah, Kevlar, but he's not a for Kevin Ferguson. He's well, look at that. All right. But, yeah. Um, so did... And then your your father's an athlete as well, yep. um, because he played one and a half years in college, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And then um, he was a walk on. He was a walk on. Well, yeah. for the yeah. Miami Dolphins. The Miami Dolphins. Right? Right. Yeah. So you have some some athletes in your in your family. Yeah. Um, and you played football. I played what, football. Wrestled. Husband, wrestled. Yeah. Tell me, yeah. tell me, you know, tell me a little bit about where your your athleticism started, even if it was before you even reached high school. Well, um, well, it all started. Well, um, with my dad, you know, uh, we had a rope in the basement. And before we did anything, we used to just bob and weave under the rope. You know, that was it. No no combinations, no hands, just bob and weave under the rope. And then me and my brother used to spar. And then I started sparring with my dad. And every time I sparred with him, I just was going down. You know, he, had, he didn't take no pressure off of me, you know. And that's what, I think that's what, I, I'm not afraid to spar with anyone or I'm not afraid of no opponent. Cause when I was a kid, I used to have to spar with my dad. You know what I mean? So that kind of brought that uh, confidence up. That's know? great. That's yeah. great. So um, in high school, I, well, let me ask you. Let's back up a little bit before we get to high school. Did you get in trouble a lot as a kid? I mean, um, or, no. or did that that well, beating I, in the well, basement? I was fast, so <laughs> they tried to catch the run. So I never, I, I didn't get caught. That's like good. That. That's yeah. good. Um, middle school, did you play any any sports? Um, I, I ran track in middle school. You ran track? I was the fastest in my school. Oh, you were? Yeah, at Forest Glen Middle School. Forest Glen. Break records? Yeah, break yeah. records, yeah. Uh, do they still stand today? They should, yeah. <laughs> they should. Yeah, You're going to go up and find yeah, out. I'm going to look back. for them now. It was actually a girl that was actually faster than me in middle school. She has to play basketball now. Her name is uh, Samoa. Oh, it, it's Garden. Yeah. It's Garden. It's Garden. Yeah. 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 He's like, oh. To this day, I couldn't beat her. I used to try to hit her and run, and she'd be right behind me. I'm like, oh, man. She oh, was that's, fast. That's great. That's yeah. great. Um, so you played track and, um, track, you ran track in middle school, in middle school. Right. And then in high school, is that where you first, cause here in this area, 
or in Springfield well, you have five A. In in high school, I actually I wrestled for a couple of years, but the first year I didn't compete. I just did a lot of tournaments. Mm -hmm. And um, explain I, that. What do you mean? Like um, I didn't compete for the school. Okay. I was I was um, wrestling with ATT, American, American Top, Top Team. Team, right? And in, in high school. So, cause I didn't know it at first, you know. So I wanted to, I had to get, wanted to get that extra training. So that's why I used to work out with um, ATT, the guy Sean, and uh, we used to, I did tournaments with them, wrestling tournaments, and I think I went undefeated in those tournaments. I didn't lose. But then I played football the next year, and the first three games I broke records, and I was ranked. But then I got hurt, and I, I broke my ankle. So that was it for my high school football career. So we're, we're talking about junior freshman. Junior. Or, I mean, um, oh, so, junior so you freshman, started. Yep. Um, well, after my, after my JV, they wanted to put me to varsity, you know. Yeah. They wanted me to go to varsity after the second game. Makes sense. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you're in high school and you're already training at one of the most well-known mixed martial arts yeah. schools. So, uh, like I said, I was looking at information up, so now I'm unsure of what your age is. How old are you? I'm 23. You're 23. Yeah. So, all in all, how long have you been training wrestling, mixed martial arts, fighting, you know, the well, combat sports? It wasn't consistent. It, the, it never was consistent. It was more for, like, I trained with them for a couple months, then I stopped. Uh, I trained here, then I stopped, you know. This is my first time I, I actually trained fully for, like, a year, you know. Non-stop training every day, morning, night. Twice a day, sometimes. You you focused on outside of high school, your wrestling, your, your training, yeah. and, and when you came to Massachusetts is when you really started to get. I don't well, want to say I, serious. You no, know, I actually was in in San Francisco in college, and every Wednesdays they had a. Um, it was weird because they never did it before. So that one year I was there in the basement, they had a um, MMA class. Nice. And we used to spar down there all the time. Like, you know, it was crazy. And it was like, I felt like I was meant to do it. Because I, I wasn't even thinking about MMA or anything. I was just thinking about photography, having fun in college. And then all of a sudden, this, they have an MMA class downstairs. So I, immediately I called my dad and told him to send me my gear, you know? Nice. And I started sparring on that. So even, even though I wasn't, um, even though I wasn't doing MMA or training MMA, it was still there. It was always around me, you know? Mm. So I felt like this was what I had to do it. Um, so you're you're from Miami, yep. went to college in California. Mm -hmm. Now you're in Connecticut. Yep. Um, what brought you here to Connecticut? Well, I was coming here just for a couple months to move, go back to Cali. I was gonna go back to school and everything. But then I found the gym plus one. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, huh, let me just come here and check it out. So I came here, met Sensei Darren and Mike. Me and Mike had a session. And I realized, you know, I was like, you know, let me uh, do this because, well, actually, before all this, I could never take it serious because I had a hernia and I didn't know what it was at the time. So every time I get to that, you know how you get really tired, but you have to keep going. Yeah. I could never keep going because, you know, I had a hernia. So yeah. when that, when I actually had that surgery and that and that went away, I was actually the, I could turn up now. How long ago was that? Like I was nineteen. Yeah, I had a hernia when I was 19. Yeah, 19. You know, I, but I had it years before that. And yeah, I just didn't me too. Know. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know, you know what I mean? I didn't know what was going on, so. The thing is, I was in the, I was in the military at the time. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, man, I was taking a piss. I looked down, and there was this a bulge, big you know? bulge. Right, I was exactly. like, that shit's not right. Yeah. And and I just put my hand over it, and, and I it, pushed and it, it pushed back it. in. Mm -hmm. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah. So, um, so they ended up putting me on, on sick call, right. and then repaired me, kicked my ass back home. Yeah. And then, um, but yeah, man, that, that stuff does yeah. suck to you mentally. Yeah. A little bit afterwards, yeah. I was like, man, am I going to split it? Right. Something's yeah. going to happen again. Yeah. Right, I was like scared like you, like you said, I didn't want to lift, I didn't want to do anything, you know. It's that then, burning, yeah, that burn gets you. Right, right. <laughs> but, then I, but then I realized I was good, the doctor said I don't have nothing to worry about, I could lift as heavy as I want, and I decided, I, I don't even lift heavy now still, you know, I still go light and take it easy, but when I'm in the ring, I just turn it up. You know, what's your intensity levels when, when you're training and when you're training for a fight? Because a lot of guys, and I don't, perceive team plus one being this way but a lot of guys go a hundred percent a hundred of the time yeah. and a lot of their careers are cut that much shorter right. because they went a hundred percent a hundred percent of the time T tell me did you have a full eight weeks and how did the training differ from when you were just learning and right. when you were like okay now it's time to train. well yeah well i'm definitely still learning everything about it but, so I, i'm no i don't i'm not sure what to do yet 
But what I did before this fight, I had a two-week notice. Um, the week that they told me, I kind of went hard in sparring. Not really too hard because I don't want to hurt my teammates. Yeah. But then, or get hurt. Or get hurt, That's exactly. Right. <laughs> right. And um, the last week, I didn't come into the gym. I was just, I was with this guy I met. I had got a personal trainer, Joey. And uh, we just worked on cardio balance, cardio and balance, mm -hmm. cardio and balance for the last week. No, I didn't come into the gym at all. For your fight, you said two weeks? Did you, have, two weeks did you say you got a two week two notice? Two weeks notice, yeah. That's crazy. Um, and I was 185 no when they told me. Really? Two yeah. week notice with that opponent or just say two weeks notice, hey, you want to fight? Well, I had one opponent, but then they said he had he got hurt or something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, and then they replaced him. So what was it? In, but with still within, within that two week span. With your original, oh, so you, you got into a fight two weeks, you got this guy. Right. The guy yeah. probably found out who it was. That's what Les so. told me. <laughs> he, out, you know? he probably yeah. found out who it was. Yeah. It was like, no, nah, I'm good. Yeah. And then, um, uh, and then you got in there. So it was set for 175. Was your original fight 175? Or? No, it was 185. 180. Oh, your original right. fight was 185. <laughs> the only only way he would take it was 175. Or no, well, no, that's why right. the guy backed out, and then the other guy was 175. Oh, so you just made it down. Right, right. How, how difficult was that for you? Wasn't hard at all. Two weeks. No, it wasn't hard. At all. You carry a lot of weight, a lot of water weight. Or um, like, well, I did. Um, I'm not sure what it's called, but I stood on this thing, and it took my um, my body like with, with electricity or something. You know, like uh, it told me, yeah, it told me how much I have in my left arm, right arm. Really? Like, yeah. So I was like, at the time, I was 185, and I had 100 pounds of muscle. Nice. Right, so I had a little bit of fat to cut at the time. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit, yeah. A little bit. I had 8% body fat. Oh, so so it's going to be tough. A, a huge change in diet to get down to yeah. 150. But my body can cut, though. That's the thing, you know. I don't know what it is about me, but I can cut. I've been doing this since, like, Optimus football, you know, playing fight, uh, playing football 160s, you know. Yeah. So I had to what cut. What about wrestling? What, is your, what was the weight? I think it was, like, 189. 189? Yeah. But I wasn't cut up in high school. I was just more like big. You, you know? fought what you walked around. There. Yeah, right, oh, right. When you're in training, where do you feel as if you're most dominant? Um, and and is that where you currently want to be, or is that where you want to be down the road? Is that same place? So if you're, are you dominant now on the ground, and that's where you want to maintain your your success is on the ground. Yeah. Obviously, understanding you want to be well rounded. Right. But where are you dominant right now, and where do you want your career to known as a stand up guy or, or a pound you out guy? I feel like um, I don't want to say too much about it because I want my opponents to think I'm just all stand up. You That's know? fair. <laughs> so I'm going to just surprise them when they try to take me to the ground. Let's put it like that. All right. All but right. if they stand up with me, I feel like they're going to go down. Do you feel that? Shots. Holding those right. pads today? Yeah, he was dropping people just doing light work <laughs> yeah, body yeah. shots. <laughs> but you caught a body shot today. Yeah. Oh, I did. I did. <laughs> no, that guy, man, he's, his kicks are beast. beast yeah, man. it just was like a snap. Yeah, it was quick. It was, he threw him quick, you know? Hey, you caught me with the spinning back. Oh, right, yeah, right, right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. He's Pretty quick, simple. man. This guy here, Tom, yeah, Tim, good. it's he's good, good, quick. Yeah. What's your vision? You, you know, I mean, I know and I understand that you're only 1-0, and oh, but to start this, you got to have some sort of vision. Even if it's one and done, bucket list or to become you know ufc champion what's your vision as of right now i'm definitely going to take it one step at a time but my vision is to have a lot of money from this mm -hmm. money 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 Makes money, money. Yeah. <laughs> keeping it. it real yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 great great right. what well, first big paycheck what are you gonna buy car what kind of car you got to narrow it down. You know, um, it, I'm McGregor not sure. Money. McGregor money. Let's talk about McGregor money. Um, definitely, I will I'll buy my mama a car first. And okay, then, okay. We got McGregor money. I'll buy my mama a car first. <laughs> In a house, right? In a house, yeah, right. Yeah. And then I might go BMW, Ford truck. All right, yeah. all right. Keep it simple. I'm not going to go crazy. You say that. Yeah. yeah. I know. I've been around it, so I know <laughs> I what not to do and what to do, you know? <laughs> Well, I, as others now I, that, as a grown man. Well, right, we haven't trained yet as a grown man. Oh, like, yeah. At this level, no, no. Tell no, me no, how no. that would go. I'm not sure, man. I, yeah, I don't know. Might be listening. <laughs> he's gonna come with the power. I know he's gonna try to prove a point, but I, 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 I wanna. I, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, like that. Much, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm different than what I was. See, that's why I want to show him. You know, I, I just want to show him everything I work, like all the hard work I put in, and you know, just want to just. To give him a taste of his own power, you know. There you go. Yeah. That's, yeah. That, that's awesome to hear. That's yeah. awesome to hear. I, I know a lot of fans would want to hear that. Um, so, a little bit here. So, aside from pro MMA and boxing, right. uh, your father has a title that follows him. You know, street fighter, street mm -hmm. brawler. Uh, how much of that part of his life influenced you to up through today? Um. Well, I was always around it, so 
it was more if I was getting knowledge from everything, you know, gaining a lot of knowledge. At the time when Maturity. he was right at this at a young age too, yeah, you know. Just so from the right, outside. just watching, yeah, you know, and that's why I was always around him. And it's not like um, at the time I didn't want to do it. Honestly, I didn't want to do MMA. I was just I was just like been around everything, mm -hmm. the hype, you know, seeing how he did his interviews, you no, know, just learning. I never knew I was gonna be here today, you know, doing this. So it's like a surprise to me. If the the slice name wasn't attached to to yourself, yeah. what's something that you'd want your fans to know about you? I mean, I, th I thought it was very interesting, the photography, right. you don't think the big bruiser yeah, with, yeah. with knockout power is, is taking pictures, yeah. you, you know, you in most cases, you got a sensitive side, there you go, there you go. Well, what, what's some things that you'd want people to know about you? That I'm just a, I'm a hard worker, man, definitely a very hard worker, and I know when to turn it on and turn it off, so, I mean, the, the job I work at, you know, I'm, I'm greeting people every day and talking to people every day, so I have to deal with people, angry people, yelling, people yelling, <laughs> yeah. and I'm like a fighter, so, you know, I, I, I could just... <laughs> Tear these people up at any time. <laughs> you know, I'm still calm. I calm them down That's and talk right. to them. And, you know, I got a good personality. You know, I'm, I'm a cool guy. Yeah. yeah. And so I love women. So like that. What's that? And I love the women, too. That's right. Yeah. 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 So, um, you, you, do you go to Hartford? I mean, Hartford's, Hartford in this area, um, per population in the United States, is some of the most dangerous places right. in the United States. Right. I'm from, How do you um, avoid that? I'm from Miami, Florida. Exactly. So, it's bad there, too. But I, I'm not one to meet. I don't like having new friends, you know. I'm not one to be friends with people that I've just met or anything like that. If it's not in the gym, mm -hmm. outside the gym, no, you know, I don't communicate close with circle, people too much. Yeah. Right, I keep everything close and tight. People I knew mm -hmm. for, for a while, you know. And I don't party. I don't club. I don't do none of that stuff. If I'm not home playing a game, I'm at work. If I'm not at work, I'm at the gym. Does if I'm not at this gym, I'm at health tracks. A lot of that probably factors, and you can correct me, but because you've sort of already experienced or been through a little bit of that, right? Right, right. So you, it's, not, it's not like you, you've gone, I don't want to say you've gone through it, but you've, you've already experienced to, to gauge on whether or not that's for you or right. not. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, give a shout out to any supporters, uh, anybody who's behind you, and, and you know, you got the floor. Right, um, definitely give a shout out to Icy Mike, uh, my dad, Kimbo, uh, my brother, KJ, my other brother, Booby, um, Plus One Defense, all the guys here, Swag, Swagget, Tom, the Caveman, Jay, Aaron, Mike, you know, all the guys here. And uh, Comeback Sports Nation, thanks for the interview. Put okay. me out there. Thank you, man. Can't wait for the fight to get released. Uh, you know that, that a if, lot of people looking forward if to that. If that was me, I would have definitely leaked yeah. that, released that. Um, you definitely want to uh, reach out to the promotion, but right. I know as soon as it's in your hands, yeah. you let us know. Okay. It's already going to go viral, right. I'm right. sure. Yeah. And uh, look, man, we appreciate your time. I know, um, you know, this is the interview. Just something you're going to try to try to um, funnel according to what your training is going to permit right. you. So I appreciate you, thank you spending you. some extra time with me yep. tonight. So thank you. Thank you. Combat Sports thank Nation, you. I appreciate thank everybody you. listening.